okay. And three, two, one, zero. Just because I am dead curious to see which one's faster. I would now, I fully expect the Mac to be faster, but you never know, because, <laughs> so as a, let's see, as a precursor, kind of setting things up here, this Mac is a 2012, I think it is, um, MacBook Pro Retina, yada yada, 15 inch, and which, honestly, the new ones aren't that much faster. And then this is a iPad Pro 12.9, I think it is inch. This is the first gen of the bigger one, so it is a couple years old. So it is newer than the Mac, but not by much. And you can see they're both turning away. Um, so focus merging over here on the Mac OS, we can start to see the grayscale layer is getting drawn in. That's really cool. We are seeing, it's a bit of a different illustration, if you will, on iOS. It just says aligning merge sources right now. Um, when I first did this test earlier, I did a complete one, and I thought that the iPad was way faster until I remembered, oh yeah, I fed it raw files, which means it was pulling out the JPEG versus this one actually processing the raws. So it uh, it turned out to be faster on iOS, but that was cheating because it was using much smaller much smaller files. Okay, while that is processing, let's just see what's going on. Uh, Estro Digital says, if you do the OS separately, there's a greater chance of more super chats. <laughs> Thank you, Estro Digital, but nobody super chats these. That's okay. Burn Sex says, keeping them separate will help with finding a particular video instead of having to scrub through the video to find the specific topic. That's true. Estro says, seriously, wouldn't try to combine the classes, the sessions together. It'd be pretty difficult for you to manage live better separately, easier to keep a grasp of what's going on for the audience. Okay, well, there you go. Thank you for chiming in. Sold. I will keep them separate. Meanwhile, these are both in a focus merge state. You can see, oh cool, see the image starting to be built. I love the way the image builds on macOS. You can see it just kind of fading in front to back. It's like it's like this, it's like studio lights being turned on or theater lights. Doof, doof, doof. Lights getting turned on as it illuminates. I'm not sure if we're gonna see that same kind of a buildup happening on iOS. It's working, it's thinking, but we'll see what happens. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tip my hat to what's gonna happen here. As we already know on Mac OS, you can open the clone tool and you have access to all the layers of the files that were brought in. I can't find that on iOS. I open up the merge tool and there's no sources stack. That can't be right, it has to be there. So if before this thing finishes, someone can tell me where that might be hiding, that would be lovely. But as far as I, I couldn't find it, I'm looking all over the place. We're gonna look again, but it's, uh, it's all over the place. Burns says, to be honest, I don't use these apps, but I do enjoy learning about them. It's neat to see what they are capable of. It is neat to see, isn't it? There's some pretty, pretty robust stuff. I'm just crazy impressed by what's happening on iOS these days. It really, really is cool. It really is impressive what's going on. Okay, so macOS is done. Here we can see the stack. So this is that sources stack I was talking about. It opens automatically. And as we discovered before, if I click on the move tool or something else, it goes away. But then as soon as I click on the cloning tool, it does come back. So there's the clone brush and there is that back again. So there's all those different pieces in there. The main reason, well, one of the reasons I want to combine, I wanted to do these side by side. Oh, and look at that. Uh, there we go. This one just finished. One of the main things, main reasons I wanted to do this other than the speed comparison was so that we could do a kind of close up analysis to see if one looked better than the other, see if there were significant differences in the focus merge. Uh, but before we do that, I want to figure out where the tools are. So if we look over here on the so if we go in the top right corner here, where you've got the little layers adjustment tool. When I open that guy, it opens up and there's just there's just the one layer, which is the same. That's what we have on macOS, right? On macOS, let's switch over to that. We look over here at layers, and under layers, you see the pixel layer, and that's it. So there's no, the source doesn't show up there. On macOS, you click on the clone tool, and that opens the source list, and there's every single layer in there. Over on iOS, when I click on the clone tool, there's no source list that pops up. And I go through and I look through the options on here and there's, you know, the, here's, there's the source thing, current layer, current layer and below, layers beneath and global, but none of these open up a source list and you have to access that source list. And it's not layers anyway, it's not layers that we're looking for, it's the source. So that's weird. So I don't know, you know, what am I missing here? Um, I look in the, drop menu here, so there's clone brush, that's where we were, but none of these other ones, healing doesn't open it, I mean, you wouldn't expect it to, blemish removal, in painting, none of these are opening a source list, so that's unfortunate, and then, so I thought, okay, well, let's go see, look under here, I'm just, not that it'll be under the hand, but we're gonna look there anyway, I look at the three dots, duplicate, pasteboard, place, fade, last, ungroup. You've just watched a five-minute sample of a live training video. 
To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash members. <laughs>